Hello ladies and gentlemen, sure we are doing great today. My name is Taiwo Akila Me, the preacher. It's Power Parenting Weekly. It's my pleasure to be with you tonight. Doing this program tonight is our night edition. We are waxing stronger. We are going all the way to have this wonderful conversation. with you titled uh, children beyond parental control anything like such is there anything like pa- children beyond parental control but before I go into this conversation let me make a quick announcement next week I'm going to be discussing a topic known as agenda driven parenting wow it's, it's powerful what it is how do you keen to it I don't want to talk much about it, but uh, from tomorrow, we are going to begin to publicize it. It's a major conversation for us. It's a conversation you need to be part of. What do we mean by agenda-driven parenting? Parenting driven by agenda. And um, we're going to be discussing that next week. It's going to be big. It's going to be huge. It's, uh, uh, it's a product of a new study that we have done. And... Uh, and we are trying to push it out there to let people know that there's something called agenda-driven parenting. Uh, what is your agenda? What is the agenda of the world? I mean, it's a big conversation. We're going to be having that um, next week, this uh, 8 o'clock. Um, it's going to be live on YouTube and Facebook. We are going to be having that conversation. Please do your best to be part of that conversation. Uh, so that together we can understand what the signs of the times are, what it means to uh, raise children in this 20th century. It's a massive century, very scary century. There are a lot of things going on, a lot of um, uh, agenda out there. Uh, we need to have that conversation. So please prepare to have that conversation. Invite other people to be part of that conversation. Uh, thank you very much once again for joining me. I'm Taiwo Akinlami, and um, my conversation with you basically today is focused on uh, raising uh, uh, what we call children beyond parental control. Uh, children beyond parental control. Is there anything like such? Does it exist? And I will start with um, growing up. Growing up, uh, my father believed that I was a child beyond parental control uh it was from him i started hearing taking someone to the welfare he would tell me i will take you to the welfare i will report you to the welfare uh, i didn't even know what welfare was he would come back home and boast about how his colleague in the office you know took his son or his daughter to welfare you know uh, a lot of that now i think the background of that belief that i was a stubborn boy you know they also use the word stubborn stubborn is a stubborn child is a stubborn child it's not going to listen and all of that note that um you know in the yoruba culture where you know i was born and raised or erased as the case may be uh it is a general belief that there are some children that will not receive training no matter how much you train them so they say there are two types of children when a child is misbehaving, they will say it's either the child is a biko or a koba. A biko means a child that has been born and is not being trained. A koba is a child that has been trained, but the child has rejected training. Training to be civil. Training onto civility, onto deportment. All of those uh, were considered to be just a th- uh, as its roots in nature. A child is destined to be an akogba that is a child that is trained and has refused to be trained a child is trained but the child has refused to be trained a child is not trained then the child has become untrained but there's this major major belief that it is possible for a child to be trained and the child to refuse to be trained so that is what the, the, the culture calls a cogba, that is, is being trained, but the child has rejected training. And so, it is believed that there's something called stubborn children. Now, please note, 
It's not strong-willed children, but I'm talking about believing that some children, they are stubborn. They are not going to, uh, no matter what you tell them, they are not just going to, they are not just going to budge. So what I want to discuss today is this concept of children beyond parental control. How did they become beyond parental control? Because they have been trained and they have rejected training. Because they have rejected training, they have become children beyond parental control. How did they become beyond control? Because they have been trained and they have rejected training. So because they have rejected training, they have become children that they are said to be beyond parental control. So the question today is, is there such children? Do such children exist who we call children beyond parental control? Do they exist? Do we, uh, do we accept into our, into our dictionary of raising children, into our social dictionary, that there's some children called children beyond parental control? If they exist, how do we, uh, uh, how do those children beyond, children beyond parental control? If they do not exist, what is the permutation? What is the ideological uh, permutation as to whether a child can be beyond parental control or whether the child, uh, uh, or there's no such thing? So that's the conversation I'm trying to have with you today. It's not going to be a long conversation. It's going to be a short conversation. I think within 30 minutes or thereabouts, I want to be able to wrap up this conversation. And so, ladies and gentlemen, sit back, tighten your seatbelt, and let's dive in as we have this powerful, powerful, powerful conversation. Now, is there anything like children beyond parental control? But let me ask the first question. Is there anything like a child beyond parental control? Is there anything like that? Is there anything like a child that is born, that is trained, that has rejected training? Is there anything like that? It is important that we start from there. And let me begin by saying that there is no such thing as a child who is trained that has rejected training. There is no such thing as what we call stubborn children, children beyond parent, children that have rejected training. No, such children do not exist. There is no such thing as children who have been trained and has rejected training. Therefore, there is no such thing as stubborn children and there is no such thing as children beyond parental control. Such children don't exist. And please hear me and hear me well. Mr. Lacolinshurion says, there is no such thing as stubborn children, only ignorant parents. There is no such thing as stubborn children, only ignorant parents, he says. And I think I quite agree with him. You know, because you see, what you call stubbornness is lack of your capac- lack of capacity to interpret the action of the child and respond to it or be proactive about it. That is what you call stubbornness. So in the true sense of it, there is no such thing called stubborn children. There is no such thing called children beyond parental control. Such children do not exist. Let me begin from the book that I read. The book begins by saying, The tongue of the wise makes knowledge acceptable. The tongue of the wise makes what? Makes knowledge acceptable. That's what the book says. The book says, sweetness of word increases persuasiveness. Sweetness of word increases persuasiveness. The book says, sweetness of word what? Increases persuasiveness. The book says, the tongue of the wise makes knowledge acceptable. So once knowledge is not being accepted, it is be- the problem is always with the one passing the information, passing the knowledge. The tongue of the wise makes knowledge acceptable. Sweetness of word increases persuasiveness. Sweetness of word increases persuasiveness. When your words are sweet, they increase persuasiveness. That is why it is said in education, that if 
children are not learning the way we are teaching. We must begin to teach the way children are learning. If children are not learning the way we are teaching, we must begin to teach the way children are learning. So what does that mean? It means we have to adapt our method, we have to adapt our methodology, we have to adapt the, the way we teach, the way we train everything we do to what the child can understand. So the foundational thing is what to call stubborn children, impossible children, children that do not listen, they are the making of the handler. They are the making of the trainer. They are never the making of the child. So the foundational thing, therefore, is that there is no such thing called stubborn children. Mr. Olakule Shorion, a co-founder, power parenting company, had established that many years ago. And so, as a matter of fact, it is the foundation upon we, one of the foundations upon which we build the power parenting ideology, the power parenting message that there's no such thing as, as stubborn children or we, what we have are ignorant parents. That is how it works. And that is something that I want to drive home at the beginning of this conversation. We cannot afford to allow ourselves to be deceived. We cannot afford to allow ourselves to ourselves to be deluded there's no such thing as stubborn children there's no such thing so if there's no such thing as stubborn children it therefore means there's no such thing as children beyond parental control my father drove that into my into my head helping me you know insisting that i was a child beyond parental i was a stubborn child number one number two i was a child beyond parental control until today when I tell my story of how I was, I was abused growing up, physically beaten, you know, people always say that, well, are you sure it's the fault of your parents? You too, you were a stubborn child. And I've had to debate some people, I've asked the question, at what point did I become stubborn? Now, I was born without concept. I was born without any power. I couldn't do anything for myself. I was born, I began to copy the environment in which I, the people and the environment in which I was growing up. I was receiving information. I was processing those information. Please note, for me to process those information, I did not need to be conscious. My system was designed to, to process those information. I didn't need to know my right from left for me to be able to process the information that I was receiving. I did not need consciousness to process my socialization. All I need was a state of being to assist, to have a brain that was functioning, to have a faculty that could observe. Once all of those ones were intact, I did not need to be conscious. I did not need to know what I was doing. I did not need to know the right from left. I just need to be absorbing and receiving those things. And please note that the proof of that is that when a child is going to speak for the first time, the child speaks the dominant language of the environment in which it, the child is growing up. When a child is going to speak for the first time, the child speaks the dominant language of the environment in which the child is growing up. The question is, who taught the child that language? Who taught, that's why Maria Montessori said, who taught a British man to be British? Who taught a German man to be German? Who taught a French man to be French? Nobody teaches them to be. They learn all of those things by observation. They learn all of those things by socialization. As a matter of fact, you consider how difficult it will be for you to learn French. You consider how difficult it will be for you to learn Chinese. Look, do consider how much it's going to be difficult for you to learn German. A child learns all of those things by nature, by observation. A child learns all of those things by, obs by, by socialization. The child, so when the child is going to speak for the first time, the child speaks the dominant language of the environment in which the child, the child, the child is growing up. And that is the reality. That's how it works. Everywhere in the world, if a child is born in an environment, the child takes the form of that environment. So I continue to say that the, the dominant culture in an environment determines what we call the temperament of the child. The dominant culture in an environment determines what we call the temperament of the child. 
The temperament of the child is determined by socialization. The temperament of the child is determined by environment. The dominant temperament is not sanguine, it's not choleric. It's not all of these things that we say. The dominant coach, the dominant temperament is environment. You are, the temperament is dominated by your environment, by the things you are exposed to. The culture, the dominant culture of your environment translates to what we call your temperament. So at the end of the day, who you are today is a function of how you were raised. You are 100% or 99% or 93% or 97% of influence. 3% is gender. 97% is 97% is environment, is socialization. 3% is gender. It, sorry, 3% is genetics. 23 90, 97% is the environment. So the question is, what kind of training are you exposing your children to? What kind of environment are you raising your children in? That is very, very critical. I grew up in, an, in, in, in Adoikiti. The environment where I grew up was a very noisy one. And so because it was a noisy one, it determined how I turned out in terms of, of, of passion, in terms of being vociferous, in terms of being outspoken. I shout for a living, I tell you. And all the, the foundation for who I've become today was laid when I was growing up. I grew up inside noise. I grew up in Face Me, I Face Your Apartment. In Face Me, I Face Your Apartment, everybody was a lord unto himself or unto herself. There is no decorum there. People did as they wish and, and there is no searching of their understanding. They did as they wished and there was no searching of their understanding. They were lord unto themselves. The landlord was also a victim, particularly if he or she lived with the people. That was the kind of environment in which I grew up. It was an environment where somebody could wake up and begin to play music and put it on the loudest volume, not minding that other people were still sleeping. That was the kind of environment I grew up. It was the environment where they would call prayer, Muslim we call prayer, Christian we call prayer in the morning. It doesn't matter whether you just went to bed at about 5 a.m., it did not matter. It was in an environment where traditional worshippers, we also called their own prayer. It was an environment where people, by 5 o'clock, they, they, they have started talking, they have started making noise. It was an environment where those who sold album, music album, we also begin to make their own noise very early. It was a chaotic environment. And so in that kind of environment, when my mother was going to call me, my mother was going to shout to call me. And when my mother was going to call me, Taye, I must respond with noise. So I grew up to be a, a first grade, most valuable noisemaker. I believed that until I shouted, I would not be heard. I would not be heard. I needed to shout to be heard. And so I went to school. My teachers also did not understand where I was coming from. Every day, I, my name was on the list of noisemakers in school. Every day, noisemaker, noisemaker, noisemaker. At a time when the appellation or the designation or the nomenclature of noisemaker was not working, I became a disturber because they could not dis I was I was not only making noise, I became a disturber. And becoming an adult, I believe in talking on top of my voice. That is how I was raised. That is my temperament. My environment is my temperament. And for me to talk quietly now, I have to be conscious of it. My wife often say, my husband, you, you can't have a private conversation. Particularly if, if we're in the midst of people and she wants to tell me something, uh, I'm saying, hey, 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 what are you saying? You know, because um, to, to keep down my voice and talk is a major problem. So that is how I was raised. That is the environment from which I came from. And that environment has unusual impact on who I've become today 
and my disposition. My disposition. You must be heard. You must, you must raise your voice to be heard and all of that. That is the environment in which I grew up. That is the environment in which I was raised. And that is the environment in which um, um, many of us were raised growing up. A noisy environment. So I took the form of my environment. I began to behave according to type. I was raised or I was erased. You know, that's conversation of another day. Erased or erased, erased or erased. It's a conversation I intend to have with you, you know, one of these days. It's my concept. Erased or erased is my concept. It's my concept. I see people using it. People, uh, they use it, they won't even acknowledge that it's my concept. It's not because I'm crazy about concepts. It's just that in this space, in the knowledge space, it is in integrity is the only thing that we have in the knowledge space. And it is important that we, we, we respect other people's, uh, other people's content. And if we are going to use such content, it is important that we acknowledge you know, uh, where that content is coming from. One of these days, I'm going to be doing something uh, on being raised or being erased. So, that is the concept. So, there's no such thing as stubborn children. There's no such thing as children that have been trained but have refused training. Please note, if we accept that there's something like children that have been trained and refused training, we are debunking well-established age-long principle of socialization. We are debunking it. There is no such thing as children who have been raised who have rejected training. There is no such children. And so if we accept that children do reject training, we are debunking the age-long age -long principle, age-long ideology, age-long principle that people take after their form. People take after their environment. We are debunking that age-long principle of socialization. That is what we are doing if we continue to reject this whole idea that it is possible for children, if we continue to, if we can continue to accept this reality that this, uh, 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 this concept, this idea that it's possible for children to be beyond parental control. Now, when you say children are beyond parental control, what you're actually saying is that parents are out of control. When you say children are beyond parental control, what you are really saying is that you are beyond parental control. What you are saying is that you are presenting your credential to say that I have failed, whatever reason that may be responsible for it, I'm not saying that because you failed, you are liable. You may not be liable. There may be many reasons that is responsible for, your, for you to say your children are beyond parental control. But what you are saying, that when you say a child is beyond parental control, what you are saying is that I'm out of control. I have failed in my responsibility. I have failed in my duty to raise my children to be within the control of value. To be within the control of virtue. To be within the control of principle. And because when we are talking about control also, we have to define the control we are talking about. We are not talking about the control that puts the life of the child under, the, under your apron string. And the child becomes someone you control with remote control. When we are saying, when we talk about parental control, I believe what we are talking about is the fact that the children that we are talking about are submitting to the control of value. They are submitting to the control of virtue. They are submitting to the control of life. They are submitting to the control that all of us must submit to as people, understanding that God did not consult us before creating this world. God did not consult us before creating us. And therefore, we have a responsibility to understand the universal principles that God has created to govern the affairs of this world and submit to it and submit to them and train our children to do likewise. That is the only form of control that our children can have. That is the only form of control that our children can be exposed to. 
any form of control that is outside that is completely unacceptable, is not the way we should go, is something that must be rejected. So when we say that children are beyond parental control, let me make it abundantly clear to you what we are saying is that we have lost control. We have lost control. I do tell government, when I work with them and and um, uh, and they said these are children beyond parental control. I tell them, I say, no, these children are not beyond parental control. The people that are out of control are the parents. The parents are the ones that are out of control. The children are not the one that is beyond parental control. The people, excuse me, the people that are out of control are the children. So, if we are going to admit the children, if we are going to put them in a place and say these children are beyond parental control, if I are going to accept that for any, whatever reason, we should also admit the parents also. We also need to put the parents in a place and they also must be received. The children are going to receive in therapy for being beyond parental control. The children also, the parents also, must be also be put in a place for them to receive training on how not to be out of control. The challenge is never about children beyond parental control, friends. The challenge is always parents that are not in control. Unfortunately, we are yet to come to terms with that reality. Forgetting that when it comes to raising children, particularly in this century, it requires knowledge. Knowledge is what to do. It requires skill. Skill is how to do it. It requires attitude. Attitude is the fortitude to do that which you know you should do. These are basic requirements. Once you do not have knowledge, once you do not have skill, knowledge, what kind of knowledge do you need to have? You need to have the knowledge of the child. You need to have the knowledge of the environment. You need to have the knowledge of the times. You need to have the knowledge of the child, the knowledge of your environment, the knowledge of the, of the, of the times, the knowledge and most importantly, foundationally, the most important knowledge is the knowledge of yourself. Who are you? What example? Because if you have a knowledge of yourself, when your children do some things, it's possible, it's easy for you to know that this is from me. She picked this from me. He picked this from me. Because you have a knowledge of yourself. So when we say knowledge, the first knowledge is the knowledge of yourself. The knowledge of your environment. The knowledge of the child. The knowledge of the times. All those knowledge is very very important you need to have skill what is skill skill is how to how do you do how do you deploy this knowledge to help you to raise responsible children how do you deploy the knowledge of yourself the knowledge of your environment the knowledge of the times the knowledge of the of the child the knowledge of what is happening around you how do you deploy all of this knowledge in the direction of your own, of, of in the direction of helping your children to do what? To train them to be responsible. So, it is my submission, ladies and gentlemen, that there's no such thing as what we call children beyond parental control. That is the conversation I came to have with you tonight. And I think to a very large extent, I've been able to have that conversation. There is no such thing as children beyond parental control. They do not exist. We have to purge our mind of that. We have to refuse to accept this balance that children, are, this, this, this idea that children are beyond parental control. We have to reject that idea that there's something called children that are trained and have rejected training. We have to reject that idea. We have to accept as evident, as truth, that it is the way we lay our bed. It is the way we lay our bed that we sleep on it. It is the way we raise our children that we meet them. We have to accept that as reality. We cannot, because for us to help our children, we have to accept as reality that it is the way we lay our bed that we are going to sleep on it. That is my conversation with you tonight. It's been a form of... Uh, 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 a very exciting conversation for me. I think I've enjoyed every bit of it. I have loved every bit of it because 
It is predicated on principle. It is predicated on age-long conversation principle, on, on socialization. Our children become our type. Our children are either beneficiaries of our examples or they are victims of our examples. Everything we don't like in our children today, we are the one who put it there. When we are tired, we don't remove it by shouting, we don't remove it by beating, we don't remove it by, 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 by disgracing the children. We remove all of those things by, uh, by showing another form of example. We remove all of those things by apologizing to our children to say, children, we are sorry the way we have carried on. We have set you up by our example. We are sorry. We want to begin to show another type of example. We want to be sh- begin to show another set of example that we, sh- that we show you how you need to live, what you need to do, how you need to relate. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope with these few points of mine, I've been able to convince you and not to confuse you as we used to say in literary and debating, not that I've ever debated for my school, I never did. Uh, I, I was not considered bright enough to do that kind of thing for my school. I was considered a stubborn boy, uh, a boy that was not settled, a boy that was not responsible enough to do that for my school. But thank God uh, for what we are doing today. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's my conversation with you tonight. Uh, it's been an exciting conversation for me. It's been a powerful conversation. Uh, if you want us to continue this conversation, please con- follow us on Instagram. My Instagram handle is at Me Follow me on Twitter, TaiwaKilami. Join this forum, this group. Uh, do not only join, invite other people to join. I threw up a challenge tried a challenge last week i don't think anybody has claimed it which is that bring people to this group and i have a gift for you this is a conversation you should not enjoy alone it's a conversation you need to be part of that is my conversation with you tonight follow me on twitter at taiwa Akilami. follow me on instagram at taiwa Akilami. listen to past editions of this conversation of parenting weekly this is the ninth edition we have other editions that we have recorded you need to listen to it you need to be you need to be part of all those other editions. They will help you in no small way. Not only that, please join our Telegram channel. Our Telegram channel is the Family Clinic. Join it. Go there. Join. Be part of it. We share with you from the grapevine. We share with you secret Things that are powerful. Things that are not... Uh, uh, things that we don't share with everybody. We share with you because we are part of our republic. Because we are part of our community. Not only that... Uh, we are on YouTube. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Taiwa Kilami. That's the name of the YouTube channel. Subscribe. Put on the notification bell. Like. Follow our our podcast on Anchor. Follow our podcast on Anchor. Let's this conversation go. In. Our products are online. Uh, we have a com- we have a product that helps you to stand. To start all form of conversation with your children at this age and time, you know, you need a uh, say for me, say for me, volume one, volume two, volume three, volume four. You need the book we have been reading from on Read to Save. If you have been on this platform, you will have seen our Read to Save. You, we, you need to, you need to, we've been reading from uh, Show Up, Stand Out, and Show Off. It's a powerful compendium of stories of principles that children can learn from and can help them to make a difference. You need to pick up that. We have a comic. We have eight editions online. Uh, edition 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You need to pick them up. You can find them on Amazon. You can find them on, on Okada Books. Please do yourself a, 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 a big favor by signing up for all of the, by subscribing to all of these things, by buying all of these things. We have a book called E-Save Manual. It's our manual on how to secure a friendly and protective environment for your children online. It is powerful. It's not called any device fable. Anything you see from, be, from us, be rest assured that it's original. So you need to pick up that. You want to know how to secure a friendly and protective environment for your children online. Please, please, I beg you, 
pick up this product. It's online when you when you pick it up, when you send us a message, uh, you can be rest assured that we're going to come back to you and we're going to rush it to you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with me tonight. Uh, you need to be part of our blog. I write a blog as of today. I have over 800 articles in that blog discussing mighty, mighty things about uh, how to raise children, about how to secure a friendly and protective environment for them. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me tonight. It's my pleasure to be with, to have been with you. It's been an exciting conversation, very powerful conversation. I've enjoyed every bit of it, and I want to believe you also did enjoy every bit of it. Don't forget, next week, I have a powerful conversation. Agenda-driven parenting. Wow. I am already excited. I'm really, really looking forward to it. Agenda-driven parenting. Agenda-driven parenting. What is it? How do you key into it? I'm going to be having that conversation next week. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. It's my pleasure to be with you. And uh, I hope to be with you next week. Having that conversation. Agenda-driven Parent, please don't forget, there is no such thing as stubborn children, only ignorant parents. Don't forget, there is no such thing as children beyond parental control. There are only parents that are beyond control, that have lost control. And so, if your children are not listening to you, you need to work on yourself, not on the children. It is always beginning from you. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. God bless you. Have a great weekend. My name remains Taiwo Akilami, the preacher, and I intend to be with you again next week. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Everybody, we share with you because you are part of our republic, because you are part of our community. Not only that, uh, we are on YouTube. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Taiwa Kilami. That's the name of the YouTube channel. Subscribe, put on the notification bell, like, follow our, our podcast on Anchor. Follow our podcast on Anchor. Let's this conversation go. Our products are online. Uh, we, have a com- we have a product that helps you to stand to start all form of conversation with your children at this age and time. You know, you need a Save For Me. Save For Me, Volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 3, Volume 4. You need the book we have been reading from on Read to Save. If you have been on this platform, you will have seen our Read to Save. You, we, you need to, you need to, we've been reading from uh, Show Up, Stand Out and Show Off. It's a powerful compendium of stories of principles that children can learn from and can help them to make a difference. You need to pick up that. We have a comic. We have eight editions online. Uh, Edition 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You need to pick them up. You can find them on Amazon. You can find them on on Okada Books. Please do yourself a a, a big favor by signing up for all of the by subscribing to all of these things, by buying all of these things. We have a book called E-Save Manual. It's our manual on how to secure a friendly and protective environment for your children online. It is powerful. It's not called any device fable. Anything you see from, be, from us, be rest assured that it's original. So you need to pick up that. You want to know how to secure a friendly and protective environment for your children online. Please, please, I beg you, pick up this product. It's online when you when you pick it up, when you send us a message, uh, you can be rest assured that we're going to come back to you and we're going to rush it to you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with me tonight. Uh, you need to be part of our blog. I write a blog as of today. I have over 800 articles in that blog discussing mighty, mighty things about uh, how to raise children, about how to secure a friendly and protective environment for them. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me tonight. It's my pleasure to be with, to have been with you. It's been an exciting conversation, very powerful conversation. I've enjoyed every bit of it, and I want to believe you also did enjoy every bit of it. Don't forget, next week, I have a powerful conversation. 
agenda-driven parenting. Wow. I am already excited. I'm really, really looking forward to it. Agenda-driven parenting. Agenda-driven parenting. What is it? How do you key into it? I'm going to be having that conversation next week. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. It's my pleasure to be with you. And uh, I hope to be with you next week, having that conversation, agenda-driven parenting. Please don't forget, there is no such thing as stubborn children, only ignorant parents. Don't forget, there is no such thing as children beyond parental control. There are only parents that are beyond control, that have lost control. And so, if your children are not listening to you, you need to work on yourself, not on the children. It is always beginning from you. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. God bless you. Have a great weekend. My name remains Taiwo Akilami, the preacher, and I intend to be with you again next week. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Mm-hmm.